Thanks very much for coming in at what is the last slot of the day for, for us. Um, very good to see everyone here and not obviously necking the Prosecco that I've seen knocking around. Um, first, a bit of an introduction to us, who we are, why we're here. Um, my name is Alex Miel. I'm Director of People and Organisation for Money Supermarket Group, and this is Ryan Eastwood, who is one of our people partners who's also working within the Money Supermarket Group. Very small bit about Money Supermarket Group. It's, we're not here to sell us, we're just here to tell you who are and why this works for us. Um, you might know us as a price comparison brand. You might have seen the ads on TV that have had various people in hot pants, Skeletor, He-Man, etc. We now have a very different brand which looks like this, which is all about being money calm. But previously, you might have known us for some slightly more flamboyant ads. Um, but we also own Money Saving Expert, which is Martin Lewis, who you'll see, we don't own him, obviously, um, who, you'll, who you've seen on TV. Um, and our whole reason for being is to save households money and to make sure that we're there on the forefront of financial campaigning. We own two other brands, one's a travel supermarket website, and the other one is a company called Decision Technologies, who partner up with, with um, businesses to help them partner with us to save money through their technology. So that's, that's who we are. The um, purpose of us being here today really was to talk to you about a case study uh, on onboarding. We're not uh, recruiters ourselves, we're not here to sell a product, but we want to talk to you about a case study that we had where a piece of technology really helped us with our onboarding journey. Um, initially, it would have been our head of talent acquisition who was going to be doing this presentation. She's currently on a spa weekend in Mallorca, which is, a, you know, a little bit unfair. We were going to FaceTime her in, put her on the spot, but we thought it would be a bit, a bit harsh. So you've got Ryan and I, so hopefully that will be all right. So this was essentially the title of our, um, not what you saw in the books, this is the one we sent in, which is, people have landed the job, now what? And um, what we wanted to talk about was the difficult transition between people who have had an excellent candidate journey They've offered, they've, we've offered and they've accepted the role, and then what happens to them next and why it's important that we focused on that. Specifically, this was our challenge. We, had, um, we have 750 people in the UK and we're across three sites. We've got people in London, people in North Wales, just over the border, um, and we've got a digital office in Manchester, not digital as in it's virtual, but an office full of digital people in Manchester. Um, initially, we had 10, 10 people in and then we grew to 30 people. And we were showing that actually Hiring technology and product engineering roles into Manchester was working for us, albeit on a small scale. So the CEO and the board told us that we, they wanted us to scale to from 30 to 150 per product engineering roles within 12 months, which is no mean, I don't need to tell recruiters that, but there's no mean feat in doing that. Um, and we needed to do it within a year to prove that we could then continue to scale and grow our Manchester office. The second point I wanted to point out is that we were onshore, and we used to work with a company called EPAM, and all of our tech was done offshore in Minsk, etc. We were onshoring our work for our biggest revenue channel, which is motor insurance. So everything we were bringing in-house, so we had to make sure we got the right people, people stayed with us, um, and that they were, the, they were the people that we were able to trust our biggest revenue channel to. At the same time, we, were, we did a little bit of uh, research into the marketplace to see if anyone knew who we were and what we did in Manchester. Um, and we, it was a very, very beige response. No one really knew who we were other than the adverts. They didn't know we were in Manchester. So our third thing was to try and build the employer brand. And then the last thing, I just stuck it in a speech bubble because I was told that about 50 times, try not to have any turnover while you were here, which is why I think this case study is really important when you start looking at um, what we want to do from an onboarding perspective. So hopefully that's set the scene enough. Essentially, what we wanted to do, we needed to move from, as I say, a bit of a, a, bit of a beige experience for people, a bit of a, um, we weren't really known in the marketplace, so something that's a little bit more positive. Um, and we wanted to make sure that we we improved that colleague experience with people. Our, our recruiters were excellent. They worked very well with agencies, they worked very well directly, and they got the right people in. But we were finding as people were landing that you had the usual challenges. People might not be having the equipment set up um, as well as they could do. Managers might not be fully ready for people to come there. They didn't necessarily know enough about the person that was joining. So we wanted to look for a tech solution. Ryan, um, we, the way we work in, in our people teams is that we, have, we, we work as a product way. And Ryan owns onboarding as a product, so actually I'm speaking completely on behalf of all the hard work he did. But, um, so right, Ryan owns product from um, a, a people perspective and was tasked with looking at what sort of solution we'd be able to put in place to make sure that we'd have a, a seamless onboarding um, experience for people. The reason we chose a tech solution was essentially for speed, we were able to control the content and we were able to then continue to maybe iterate what we were doing within what, why, we, why we use this solution and we iterate with the content that we were putting in. Quite often what I found with the candidate experience is that you've got a set bit of content, you can force them or push them to a, a careers website, but unless you're regularly updating that, which is actually quite hard to do, quite time consuming to do, it becomes quite stale and quite old. So we work with an organization 
um, M. Border, who are here today. Um, and that's the one we chose. And then we'll be able to explain and show to you how that we were able to iterate the, uh, the content. The most important thing for us is that we needed it to be interactive for people, and we wanted to personalize it. And what you'll see later when we do a little bit of a demo with you, you're able to, to see a little bit of what you're, the, the journey that you'll find, is that um, we were able to push content to people from day one. As soon as they accepted the offer that we'd given them, we were able to uh, get them set up on the onboarder system, which is a text or email-based system. We, it, it pushes any content we want to send to them. So as I say, it can be generic, like a welcome to money supermarket group. But if they're joining a, a particular squad, we could push content for that particular squad. If they're joining in product, we can push it completely for product. Um, and it gives them the opportunity to really get to understand who we are, the people within their team, their manager, a little bit more about our culture and our, our environment before they join. Equally, on the flip side, it gives that manager the opportunity to have that really strong bond with the person before they join. And the, what, what I really like about the solution is it does actually ask quite light-hearted, informal, personal questions as well. So when you, when you see the demo, you'll be asked things, for, as, as you're a new, new hire, you'll be asked questions such as just basic things about your interests. Or it asks a really nice question that I like, which is, what is your favorite snack at 3 p.m.? So that when people join the business, they're landing not just with a traditional welcome pack of, I don't know, um, a pen and, and the laptop and everything. You can put that 3 p.m. snack on there. You can buy them a gift that's relevant to what their interests are. Um, I, I hired someone within, within my team. She was particularly interested in South America and um, food, so I bought her a recipe book that was based around travels through South America. Her 3 p.m. snack was pizza rolls. I struggled there, couldn't find them anywhere. Um, so I bought something that was akin to that. But what you could see when that person joined, when she joined into the team, is that it was a really good personalized experience for them. So not only she had a really good hiring experience through our TA team, when she joined, it carried on from there as well. That is completely the wrong side. Sing amongst yourselves for a second. Um, we... We decided to put this in place, as I say, that people have been having a bit of a struggle around their experience. And what I thought was important for you to understand is not only the challenge that we had, but also how we've been able to work with Emboarder and how, what the data has been telling us um, in whether it's been successful or not, and what we've had to do as a business to be able to iterate and, and change what we do to make sure that it is successful for people. As I said, Ryan kind of owns the product for onboarding, so what, I, what I'm going to do is hand over to Ryan to talk through the data in a bit more detail to show you how successful we believe it's been within the business. So, Ryan... Hello. So we look at the data on a, on a monthly basis because what we wanted to do was have a solution that worked for, for everyone but also continually change it because we didn't want something that we just had and then we left for a year and revisited it. We wanted to continually keep improving the journey. Um, so we look at it from an employee perspective, so that's the new starter, and also from a, manage a manager perspective. Um, and then we also look at it from a location uh, basis as well because we have three very different locations um, which kind of attract different types of people. Um, so Manchester, we started using it in July last year, so we've got um, more new hires on that journey, so more data as well. Um, and then London and then ULO as well, we started to trial that um, this year in January. And what we found was that employees, as you can expect, were really engaged in the process because they were starting a new job. From the moment that they'd signed their offer, we started with communication, started asking them things, started giving them bits of information to get them excited, um, and we started getting their manager to keep in regular contact with them as well. Um, so that score has stayed steady um, throughout um, since last year, um, with the end border benchmark being 74%. So we're really pleased that we've managed to keep that score. Um, so we have been looking at kind of the feedback as well. Um, and I think the, the main thing that we learned was actually if we were asking people for certain pieces of information, that might stall the process. Um, so one thing that we do do is we ask them for a bio before they start so we can get their manager to send it out to the team so everyone knows that they're going to start and what they like and dislike and stuff like that. Um, so we just moved some of the sequences around a bit to make sure that people didn't get stuck and then we lost them. Um, managers... Initially, we were about 63% with an M border benchmark of 59, but we found them a bit more of a, a tougher cookie to crack, just because I think, firstly, in the past, we didn't expect much of them at all. We had an onboarding checklist on our internal intranet, and that was really it. Um, and then all of a sudden, we wanted them to start um, really engaging um, more uh, nudges for them as well. Um, and I think also what something that we learned 
probably a few months in is we had managers who were onboarding whole teams. So once you've had the, the experience one, two, three times, they knew what to do. Um, so we, we noticed that started to drop a bit as well. Um, so one of the things that we did do to kind of solve that, um, and I think the engagement, especially for Manchester, has risen as a result of doing that, um, is we took out some of the steps in the process. So we still gave them the key things that we wanted them to do, like reaching out to their new starter before they started or making sure that they were doing key things. Um, but that has meant that them going through a bit more of a lesser process that they have um, the engagement picked up as well. Um, and I think it's important to note as well that just because manager engagement isn't as high as the employee engagement, um, employees don't have a bad experience in terms of the, the, the kind of journey they go through because Enboard kind of steps in for that. But I think it becomes noticeable when the employee lands. Um, so that's kind of been a, a big focus for us um, in find a solution that works for both us and the manager. Um, and I think by using Emboarder as well, it's meant that we can bring in the workplace team, a buddy, so it's not just all on the manager to, to do the onboarding. We can get other people involved to share the workload and create a, a good onboarding experience. Um, but also, we, we have, as most companies do, a kind of a one-month onboarding survey. Um, but we also introduced more short pulse surveys. Um, so this is the results for the one-week survey. Um, and what it really meant was that we could look at the data in the moment and then we could nip things in the bud where necessary um, rather than things escalating and things like that. Um, and I think from the employee perspective, so these scores are all out of five. And really, it, the data is saying what we wanted this solution for in the first place. People are engaged from the off. Um, and they're excited about joining. They, they know we haven't forgotten about them either. Um, and actually, on day one, they have the kit, they have laptop, you know, they have a building pass, and people know they're turning up. And that was a big thing for us because we wanted to make sure that we got the basics right and then started doing all the nice stuff. Um, manager scores, again, really, really good. Um, and I think it was a new thing for managers for us to have this big expectation that we actually wanted them to engage with us and engage with their new starter as well. Um, and I think it's nice to, for them as well because previously we never asked them how they felt or how they felt the new start was um, getting on. So it's good to see that actually we care about what managers think and care about supporting them as well. Um, and actually, um, I think that's been the biggest thing for us and our focus continues on how we can work with managers and how we can make sure that it's fit for them as well as the new starter, as well as for us. I think another key data point which isn't on there is that we, we were successful in recruiting the 150 people and we've obviously continued to, to grow Manchester. But we, we did have some turnover, but we only numbered six people. And those six people didn't cite anything about their experience, their onboarding experience, their first few months um, within their reasons for leaving. Some people decided to go back to contracting. Some people actually then were randomly counter-offered, unfortunately, and they went back, which I do believe is also, or sometimes a mistake. Um, and other people had actually just... just it, it wasn't necessary for them as a business and for the work that we were giving them. So I felt confident that what we'd put in place had, um, had probably managed to secure the vast majority of people and give them that, that good landing experience. What I want to, to do now is, hopefully, if it worked, fingers crossed, give you the um, opportunity just to test it. So this is probably going to last a couple of minutes whilst, whilst you do what you need to do. So if you, if you want to join in, you can get your phone out. We will be asking you to text something to a number. What you'll receive will be um, a mixture of money supermarket content and generic content. So we aren't giving you all our MSM content because that would be um, probably the wrong thing to do. But you will receive information, uh, a, a welcome video from us and also just generic onboarding content. So, um, I'll give you the, what you need to do. Um, you can watch the video if you want, but you probably do that in your leisure time uh, because we, it's probably better just to, to see how it works, get with your experience with the first touch point, and then, and then we can move on. So what you need to do um, is text your name to this number. Um, by all means, get the numbers incorrect and text a random phone and see where that lands for you. Um, but text your name to this number, and you should receive a response from... Um, uh, a, a text coming in from a slightly different number with a link to click on. So hopefully that will work as we wait and see if it does. <laughs> There's some bings in the audience. That's always nice to hear. So 
So hope it's working, so I can hear the video. Um, hopefully, what you, as I say, what you'll, you'll see is that this is this is just a really kind of pre-seed version of the first touch point, but it 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 allows us, as I say, to completely personalise or push the content. We, so we we would normally choose to push the welcome video, um, some information about our benefits. The bit that you get there is more, as I say, generic. It's not really us, um, and some information about the team that people are joining. And then you'll go. You'll also see a question set that we ask people to complete. And to Ryan's point. We hope that that doesn't slow down the process. It doesn't seem to slow down the process. It's actually quite engaging. And that asks the questions that, that actually hopefully makes the candidate feel welcome because, as I say, some of them are quite informally personal, but others are, are important for us with the information that we need to get from the uh, for the business. Once you complete that and then you send it, it comes back into the manager, um, and then the manager will get regular touch points. I think it's one month to go, two weeks to go, etc., cetera, and, and, and other things that they need to complete. Um, in the... As well, you, as Ryan said, we can set up a buddy for that person, so that buddy would then be able to start interacting with the individual, um, so that when they join, not only are they welcomed by uh, their team, they've got everything they need, there's also a buddy ready to, to come and talk to that individual. So hopefully the, it's, a, it's a very, very quick demo, hopefully you can, you can get the look and the feel for it, but I just wanted to share that with you so you had a bit of an, an understanding about what it, what it was like for us um, and for our, our new hires. The other thing we wanted to do, not least because I've got a cold and my voice is pretty monotonic at the moment, is just play a very short video to let you know how our tech teams and our product engineering teams have found both Emboarder and the journey, but also onboarding here. Because we can stand up and say it's brilliant, and it's not without its challenges, as Ryan said. But I think it's also quite interesting to hear from, from others as well. So hopefully this video will autoplay. Um, the sound comes in when someone talks.
So the, <coughs> excuse me, the reason, the reason for playing that was, was to show, hopefully, that generally that's the sentiment we've got from our, from our candidates, from our new hires, from our colleagues. Um, but we've taken on board everything that they've said and everyone else from the outtakes and everyone else that we've spoken to and, and continue to try and improve the, um, the journey for people. Initially, we set this up to try and solve a problem in Manchester, which was scaling from 30 to 150 people. Um, but that was such a success that we decided to roll out Emborder and our onboarding journey in London and in Ulo. As Ryan said, it's very different people in London. Ulo. London's a very commercial office, um, and Ulo's a lot of transactional finance, um, customer service, so very different types of roles, whereas Manchester's product, and engin product engineering. But we have found that actually it works for absolutely everyone, um, in the sense that we haven't found one type of role, which I think is important if you're, if you're recruiting across the spectrum, we haven't found one type of role that, does, that checks out or one type of role that doesn't necessarily work. What we want to do now is try and take this kind of approach into um, the what next slide, type of approach into the other areas of our employee and colleague experience. Um, we, we, we find that we do really well for site weeks one to four, and then we want to try and make sure that we've got something that helps that colleague through week four to sort of month three, when they're really settled in, when they're passing that probation period, when they feel like they've they're, they're really got their feet under the table, that's important for us. And also the other, the other product that Ryan owns is complete other end of the spectrum, which is exiting. Um, and it's important for us also to, to make sure that when obviously people leave and feel that whatever reason they've left for, that they've had a really good experience with us. So we feel that there's an opportunity there that maybe there's a tech solution there as well we, we, we'll be looking into in, the, in, a, in a similar way, just to get people um, continuing to, to speak well of us when they leave. But the purpose of this really was a very quick, and it has had to be quick, um, overview of how we've, we've used a tech solution to, to improve our onboarding, which we believe has, has worked very well. Um, and and that's, that's pretty much it. And I, we're very keen to take any questions you might have about the onboarding journey.